We have 25 orders going out, totaling a little over $800 in sales in the past 24 hours. Let's get to pulling and packing and find out what's sold. These diesel jeans sold for $48 plus shipping. And these Lululemon leggings sold for $18 plus shipping. So right here we have a bulk order of four New It Tags Claiborne jeans sold for $124 plus shipping. Oh, hey there. So what I've been spending a lot of my time doing as of late, now that I'm ordering more in bulk, is sorting a lot of these clothes between what I wanna keep and what I want to get rid of. So what I wanna get rid of gets sorted into this tote here, and then what I wanna keep gets laundered and then stacked up here in about a stack of 500 pieces so it gets all those wrinkles out and gets ready for the photography process. So I've been spending a lot of my time lately sorting tons of clothes clothing, but I feel like I'm saving a lot more time because the thrift stores and Goodwill Outlet are about an hour to two hour drive for me. And I just don't have the time right now in my schedule to be heading out, going out and picking about three to 400 pieces a week. So instead I have been buying bulk bales and bulk clothing lots and being able to buy thousands of pieces at a time. And now it's up to me to sort a lot of those pieces and that is now where my time is headed. I spend about five to seven hours a week sorting clothes. And, and the clothes that I don't wanna keep that get discarded get recycled by a company called Just Porch It, where they come to your home and they pick up the clothes that you do not want and they get recycled into carpeting material, into insulation, into other rag houses. That could be a great option for you if you're looking to expand your sourcing method, maybe reaching out to small mom and pop thrift stores and seeing if they offer any type of bulk deal when it comes to maybe some of their clothes that they might have extra. Clothing is one of the most popular things in thrift stores. When you walk into a thrift store, what is the first thing you see? Clothing. Another good tip would be reaching out to junk removal services and seeing if they have any clothing that might be available as well. So here's a good one to be on the lookout for. Anything with the art style by MC Escher. Their t-shirts can range between 100 to 200, $300. This sweatshirt here sold for $140 plus shipping and it had a lot of stains listed about a couple weeks ago and took a best offer. So that can be an example of getting more knowledge as far as what people are looking for. Anything with the MC Escher art style, like a t-shirt, even if it has holes or stains, it's gonna be worth picking up because of the demand. Like I said, this had a few stains on it and you know maybe if it didn't have any stains it could have gone from closer to the 200 dollars range this came from the bulk buyout of 10,000 pounds and this sweater was just thrown in with the kids clothes so if you ever find any kind of trippy funky looking art style like this you're gonna want to pick it up this mark echo shirt sold for ten dollars plus shipping all right so mark echo is not a brand that i'm super actively looking for what I've had experience with this brand is this is a super slow sell through rate for me. And you know, maybe some of their jeans might be worth picking up, but I mean, this shirt was listed maybe eight months ago and it took a while to sell. Took a best offer of $10. So getting started on eBay can be a little difficult, especially if you have no idea what you're doing. You know, structuring titles, pricing your items, how to take photos. You could check out linked in the description down below where I offer a free seven day trial of my eBay coaching. I work with you five days a week for five hours putting a system and process in place similar to the one that helped me achieve over $178,000 in sales on eBay last year, selling men's and women's pre-owned clothing. Included in that seven day trial is an eBay store review, a reseller spreadsheet, and if you do not like the group and you don't like your, and you don't feel like you're getting value out of it, just cancel on day six before the free trial period uh, expires. And at least I could give you an eBay store review and some helpful tips to really get you hitting your eBay goals. And if you feel like it is giving you value and you want to continue, it is just one dollar a day after that, and I work with you and continue to help you build your business for the goals that you want to achieve. Like I said, you can find it linked in the description down below and you can check it out and I'd love to see you there. 
Someone had asked recently what types of lights I use. These are just the simple LED bicolor lights by the brand newer. These are the NL660s. So you can find it linked in the description down below. But the great thing about these is that they're so simple to use and they put out plenty of light. That's just one of them turned on. And there's the second one. So more than enough light, right? But the cool thing about these is they don't take up too much space. You know, if you have a big soft box here, it's gonna be taking up so much space. And if you don't have a lot of space to work with, this is the way to go. Um, I think it's about $160 for the set. That includes the stand. It includes the light with the battery. And you can just go from there if you need to add more. But I think that this would be plenty sufficient enough to be able to light a five by five type of vertical flat lay or whatever you're trying to use. Even if you do shoes or um, action figures, DVDs, this is a great light because you can adjust the intensity, you can adjust the color temperature, and even can take it out in the field with you if you have these batteries here and you won't need access to electricity. So for 180 bucks, you can take that investment into your business and these can last a long time. I've had them for about two years. All right, this bag here by Club Monaco sold for $32 plus shipping. Tons of these bags came from a storage unit buyout and I'm still processing a lot of them, but you know, anything leather obviously is gonna be a good pickup, but this brand Club Monaco, I'm sure I could have gotten more for it, but at the same time, I'm really not a handbag tote seller. So just happy to get this money, you know, back invested into my business to buy more bales. So this Kenneth Cole shirt sold for $12 plus shipping by a repeat buyer. Let's see, 72, 7627. So someone had asked recently, what is kind of the waste associated with buying in bulk and what can you typically expect to throw away and what can you expect to keep? So I could sort between five to 7,000 pieces a month and that's what my current pace is, that could change. And I list about 45 items a day. So that means I need about 300 to 400 pieces a week to be able to hit my listing goal. So if I can buy two bales at $250 a piece and extract about 1500 pieces from that, I'm only paying, you know, 30, 40, 50 cents per item, though it does come with the, the excess, the stuff that you don't want. So I recommend finding some type of recycling, um, you know, some type of clothing recycling center where you could take those extra items that you wouldn't list in your eBay store and have them recycled. Even at the very least, donate them and don't throw them in the trash. It's trying to create some kind of sustainable system that doesn't have these clothes that doesn't have these clothing items ending back into the landfill. So I'm being a lot more strict with what I'm putting in my store and um, just really trying to bring in the quality. And so far the quality has been pretty consistent, you know, though that could change because a lot of the bulk items that I'm buying in the bales are either items that came off the shelf or items that have a defect or items that were simply extra items that they have no space for. So I get all my bales from St. Vincent de Paul and they have so much clothing coming in that they don't have the space or the storefronts to be able to put all these great items in. So therefore they wholesale these bales out to other resellers or other companies. You know, the St. Vincent's in my state doesn't have a pay by the pound type of system like Goodwill does. So that's why I recommend reaching out to sp smaller thrift stores that might be overloaded with clothing and they would love to give you a bulk deal. So something to keep in, keep in mind as you continue to grow your store. Um, I always like to do the things that everyone else doesn't do. You know, um, doing the things that are kind of like, what? And that's kind of how I like to, uh, you know, innovate and keep things always uh, kind of spontaneous and fun in my business. I, I like to do um, kind of the untraditional methods of, of sourcing because um, I'm, I'm trying to 
get higher quality items. And when there's more competition in a certain area, that means you're gonna be having to compete with other people, therefore finding less quality items. These vintage made in USA mom denim shorts sold for $13 plus shipping. These How pants sold for $32 plus shipping. This was a decent brand if you can find How, H-O-W-E, while you're outsourcing, you might wanna consider checking it out, making sure that it's a right purchase for your business. And that's why I just recommend, you know, maybe posting a Facebook ad, maybe getting on Craigslist, calling junk removal services, and reaching out and see what they can do for you. It's worth it spending an extra hour a week to help improve your sourcing methods. And you don't know what you might find. You might find a, a connection where you have a lifelong relationship with this per partner and they wholesale and you retail and that can be a lovely thing. So the next thing that sold are these Lucky Brand jeans, 10713, sold for $16 plus shipping. I'm always picking up Lucky Brand no matter what. I do find it pretty frequently in these bales. Um, you know, another... Uh, Another person had asked, well, what can you expect to find for a dollar or less? Is it even worth it? So the quality of the bulk bales would be similar to what I would find at my local Goodwill bins. And that's why I'm happy with that. I can pick through my items in peace and not have to wait for every new bin to come out and put my football gear on and jump over people just to grab a Carhartt t-shirt, you know? So always be expanding your knowledge on new ways to solve old problems. Maybe the problem is that you can't find enough items, but the solution is thinking new ways and of new ideas to solve old problems. So the more and more that people go to Goodwill bins, Goodwill outlet, the thrift stores, and this industry is supposed to grow 3X, 4X within the next 10 years. So you're gonna have to start refining your process on different ways to source. Maybe starting a junk removal business can be a good idea. Maybe getting connected with an estate sale company can be a good idea. So just always be thinking about new ways to do the same things because change is constant. And if you're not constantly initiating change in your business, then you're gonna let change happen to you. And that might not be the change that you want to see. This brand is a staple brand for me, the North Face. Sold for $18 plus shipping, just a regular men's long sleeve t-shirt. Living in the Pacific Northwest, I find a ton of outerwear, Eddie Bauer, Columbia, North Face. Um, and those are things that I constantly pick up really regardless of condition. Um, so 12.625. And you know, just really going into eBay's search and typing in men's jeans, men's t-shirts, women's tops, women's jeans, and search by radius. And why search by radius? Because you wanna see what other resellers are picking up as well. And you wanna know what type of items that are in abundance in your area. Searching by radius, the solds on eBay, is one of the most underrated things that you can do for your brand knowledge, your brand awareness, and sharpening your skills to see what is out there. So go on eBay, use left-hand navigation, and go search by radius according to your zip code, and then search highest to lowest. So type in women's pants, type in women's shirts, men's shirts in search by radius from highest to lowest and start studying those brands because that's what you're going to find in your area because I cannot find what you find in your area and vice versa. So maybe I have a ton of outerwear, but if you live in Florida, you're probably not going to see a lot of Sherpa lined full zip sweaters. So just get in the habit of doing that maybe once or twice a week and start refining your brand knowledge and start picking up what is abundance in your area. These Columbia men's chino pants sold for $30 plus shipping. They are new at tags. These were listed about six months ago and I took a best offer. This Calvin Klein wool men's pullover sweater sold for $20 plus shipping. And if you haven't seen my process for pulling and packing orders, what I do is I just pull them in the order that they came in on eBay. That way I'm able to go to my bulk shipping screen on eBay, just go down the line per SKU, and just making sure that nothing's out of order and things are getting shipped to the correct place. 
Another Calvin Klein men's pullover. This is new with tags, 100% wool made in Thailand, sold for $26 plus shipping. These men's 5'11 tactical pants sold for $14 plus shipping. These pants were absolutely destroyed. Holes, ripped hems, stains. Listed them for $17.95 and someone offered $13.50, which I was surprised. Obviously I took it, so $11.132. So this is the thing where if it is destroyed and if it has stains and you go, this will never sell, you might be surprised because the brand 511 Tactical is a great brand, decent brand to be picking up. These are just some rip stop pants that were completely thrashed. Someone still was willing to pay $13.50 plus shipping for these. So maybe you find a brand that is similar and maybe it has some you know like let's say carhartt for example dickies you know those pants can be often associated with workwear and if they have stains and holes and rips sometimes i've seen carhartt jeans that have stains and paint stains and holes being sold for more than a clean pair of carhartts that might be used but might not have any defects so what do you do do you pick up brands that you like, but maybe has a stain or a hole? And what do you do? Do you still list it? Do you throw it out? Um, for me, it is just a, only a handful of brands where I will still list it if it has a stain or a hole, but the brand needs to be strong. I love picking up this brand, Mossy Oak. These are just some men's camo pants, sold for $20 plus shipping. I find a ton of camo hunting gear and I'm always picking it up, no matter what, because it has great resale value, has more demand during the hunting season, obviously, so it might be seasonal. Are you picking up certain patterns? Because camo is definitely in right now. I don't feel like it's more dependent on your brand, but rather the pattern. So if you do find some camo, anything out there, you might wanna consider, hey, this might have a more of a demand because of the pattern so what do you do as a clothing reseller are you picking up more of the trends of patterns or are you just leaving it and letting it go um, i've been having really good success with camo patterns and being less you know um, strict about oh it's not on my brain list but you know who cares especially if you're paying like a dollar to two dollars or less it's not so crucial if you have the space to store it. These Champion Men's Joggers sold for $10 plus shipping. This Talbot's Women's Full Zip Sweater made out of terry cloth sold for $10 plus shipping. Talbot's is another kind of lower end brand for me, but certain styles definitely sell better than others. So happy to get this moving. Another pair of Champion Joggers. These are some women's sold for $10 plus shipping. This Kenneth Cole shirt sold for $13 plus shipping, 5829. Are you guys setting standards for what you pick up when you go out sourcing? I believe it is really the key to having quality items in your store and less of the fluff, less of it being watered down. Um, so I just want to know what are your guys' strategies when you go out sourcing? What are you trying to um, pass up on? What is a reasonable profit for you? What is a reasonable sell-through rate? We're all in different boats here. Sometimes people want long tail items. Some people have massive warehouses where they can wait two years to, for an item to sell. But for maybe a smaller reseller, what's kind of your vision? What's kind of your goal in your reselling business? Are you just looking for the model of only picking up items that have a 90 day sell through rate or less, or are you trying to now expand your business and go more towards volume? So leave in the comment section down below, what are you trying to do with your reselling business? What is your goal? These Worthington women's chino pants sold for $14 plus shipping. All right, so now we got all the orders packed here in sequential order as the orders came in on eBay. Let's get to shipping them out and getting them ready for USPS to come and pick them up. So most of these brands were very simple, basic bread and butter brands. But if you want to know some of those higher end brands that I'm on the lookout for constantly, you could check out this video here where it goes over the top 50 brands that I'm on the lookout for constantly. Check it out and I know it could be very helpful for you.